welcome everyone so welcome to shankaragi's academy in this session we are going to discuss the previous year question papers related to polity so in this session we have picked some 60 questions and we have discussed like uh, what are the key answers so what are the source of these questions and how you got to answer it so if you don't have any such kind of uh, factual information knowledge so how you can eliminate and what type of logic you can apply for arriving an answer Right. We will go through the questions right now. So, the first question. With reference to the Indian history, the members of Constituent Assembly from the provinces were? This is relevant to the, the constitutional history. So, the members of the Constituent Assembly from the provinces were? So, they are not directly elected. All right. And they were not nominated also. They were not selected also. So, it is about elected. But how they were? They were elected by the provincial legislative assemblies as such fine so they were kind of indirectly elected by the members of the legislative assemblies now this is a very simple straightforward taken from ncrt also so how it has a combination of uh, elected and nominated members like you know, representing all sections of society second is consider the following statements about the charter act so here it is also question is about the constitutional history it ended the trade monopoly of the East India Company except for its trade with tea trade and trade with China. Yes, this is a correct statement. And second statement, it asserted the sovereignty of British Crown over the Indian territories held by the company. Yes. And still, like no, even though the powers are there, but it still give that thing. And the revenues of British the revenues of British India were now controlled by the British Parliament. Actually, the revenues were controlled later on only. Well, it was not given exactly so the revenues were given to the parliament as such like no control like in 1850s as such fine so this statement is wrong whereas this statement is correct so the answer is one and two so all these things are factual questions whether you can kind of remember from ncrt or from lakshmi Kant. the third is an analytical question consider the following statements so this question is related to constitutional government UPC has asked questions related to constitutional government on more than two occasions. In fact, like three times they've asked it. So, what is it? It places effective restrictions on the individual liberty in the interest of state authority or it places effective restrictions on the authority of the state in the interest of individual liberty. See, both the statements like no, on its own, it's correct. But with respect to constitutional government, now what is the meaning of constitutional government means? a government which is limited by the constitution why does the government is limited or why does the constitution wants the powers of the government to be limited means like no in order to ensure that certain rights are guaranteed to the citizens all right so by the word itself so constitutional government means a government which is limited right so limited government means you are restricting the powers of the state so in this statements so what is correct means so it places effective restrictions on individual liberty in the interest of state authority is wrong even though the state can make certain reasonable restrictions that too for the purpose of the enjoyment of fundamental rights of others is it not it's not for the state authority as such fine so the answer correct statement should be second one all right for the interest of individual liberty the powers of the state is limited as such fine so it is the second statement which is correct now here it is where most people will get it wrong they think first statement is also kind of limiting no first statement is limiting the powers of the people it's not limiting the powers of the government as such so the next question is about like no indian federalism they are asking which is not a feature of indian federalism so first statement independent judiciary should be a part of it so hence this cannot be an answer because it is a feature of it powers have been clearly divided yes it is divided so right from article 246 as well as like you no know, schedule 7 so this also cannot be an answer they are asking not a feature the federating units have been given unequal representation in the Rajya Sabha now, this is one distinguishing factor Indian federalism differs from the US US they have equal representation all the 50 states have two members each in the Senate all right so this is also a unique feature of Indian federalism so now 
it is a result of an agreement among the federating state units no this is not because this is correct only with the case of usa so india like no so there are two concepts with respect to federalism now one is called as the <coughs> the type of federalism you have like one is called as like no coming together and another one is holding together so india is a example of a holding together type of federalism whereas usa is a coming together all right where the states came together and formed a federalism in india it's not like that so this union is sharing the powers among the states so we wanted a strong center because like no we had so much so many kind of problems right the religious problems linguistic problems there is so much of a cultural divide ethnic divide and also we wanted a strong center as is fine that is what so the answer is d d for delhi fifth a constitutional government is definition a limited government as i said like no this question was frequently asked all right it is a straightforward question like no the questions can be sourced from nao's textbooks national institute of open school in india a separation of judiciary from the executive is enjoined by it's a very straightforward question taken from uh, the par act or you can say the ncrt so direct principles of state policy article 50 separation of judiciary from executive very straightforward easy question again another easy question economic justice the objectives of constitution has been one of the as as one of the in one of the indian constitution where it is provided as such means the word economic justice it is mentioned in say preamble also and it is mentioned in see direct to principles also okay so if you look into preamble as such like now they would have mentioned about justice of social economic political whereas in direct to principles you see in article 38 they would have mentioned about justice as such all right again the social economic political justice so which one of the following objectives is not embodied in the preamble okay so with respect to the liberty so liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship is there so thought is there expression belief is there but economic liberty is not mentioned so this is the answer so all these things are mentioned but this is not made of mention so the answer is economic liberty it's a very easy question again the mind of the makers of the constitution is reflected in the preamble now why this answer so where exactly it is mentioned in the berubari union case the berubari union case it is a statement made uh, while they concluded that preamble is not part of constitution but they mentioned it is it is a key to open the mind of the makers of the constitution the same berubari union second i mean the another judgment was taken as a question so this is question number 10 the preamble to the constitution so is it part or is it not a part as such all right even though it was mentioned in the berubari not a part later on the question in the bharti case it was mentioned as a in berubari it was mentioned not a part but whereas in question in the bharti it was mentioned as a part so right now since question in the bharti judgment came in 1973 which overruled the judgment in berubari that stands valid today so preamble is a part as is fine preamble is a part so you can admit it now whether it has the same legal effect means so the answer is d why because both in berubari uh, and in kesavan and the bharti they said preamble is not a source of any substantive power okay so it does not kind of give any power to any authority or any organ on its own okay what it does is that already the powers given in the other provisions the other enactment part so that has been kind of repeated here all right so it does not on its own give any such kind of source or it is not a source of any such powers also limitations also so that is the reason why so preamble on its own independently does not give any power all right so that is what like d again it was mentioned like now this is mentioned in berubari also kesavan the bharti also but only difference is in berubari they said it is not a part all right fine this is about 10th question consider the following statements uts are not represented in rajya sabha now at present like no so uts like 
so nctd national capital territory of delhi as well as the puducherry as well as jammu and kashmir all these three they are represented in rajya sabha so one seat for puducherry three for delhi and four for jammu and kashmir all right so that is first statement is not represented that is wrong so first eliminated and uh, so you have to find it out like no whether the second statement it is within the purview of chief election commissioner to adjudicate election disputes now here it is a logic here election disputes means even it can be in mp election mla election or it, it can be uh, election of president vice president the constitution has given different different bodies is it not so for the president and vice president like not as a supreme court for the mps and mlas the respect to state high courts where the constituency respect to state or the, the high courts as such fine for the local self government like no it will be decided by the state legislature what level of court so it's very kind of uh, common right this question like no chief election commission will adjudicate election disputes it's, it's very wrong logically speaking fine now second is also wrong means automatically the answer is d that is none so why the third statement is wrong according to the constitution the parliament consists of lok sabha and there's rajya sabha only no in addition to that it has president also so that is what the constitution of parliament as such all right so even the president is not a member he is still an integral part of parliament you know that because of the reasons only after his assent a bill becomes an act question number 12 Consider the following statements. This is about Aadhaar, based on current affairs also, governance also. Aadhaar card can be used as a proof of citizenship. No, Aadhaar is just a residence proof. Aadhaar number is a residence thing. So even if you are not a citizen of India, you can apply and get an Aadhaar as long as you are a resident. All right, fine. It has nothing to do with citizenship. In fact, there is no such kind of specific card for citizenship. Of course, like no, you can use the voter ID. to show that like no you are a citizen and all so you have other certain other documents other is not one such once issued once issued like no other number cannot be deactivated or omitted no so this also can be all right if at all like no they have obtained by fraud or any other mechanisms or if they move out of the country as such like no so in that case also it can be done as such fine so there are so many such conditions given under the other act so the answer is d one of the implications of equality in society is so equality results in absence of what once everyone is equal so that means what there is no such kind of privilege given to anyone because if you give privilege that is not equality you are given a special privilege to kind of like no bypass the queue all right you are kind of given privilege for let to say arrest or something that that is not that is not kind of equality equality means everyone should be treated equally so in this case equality is the absence of a privilege as such which one of the following statement is correct rights are claims of the state against citizens rights are privileges or rights are claims rights are privileges now first thing you have to eliminate the word privileges no rights are not privileges privileges is something you are given because of your post or position all right so rights cannot be privileges in fact like this is an ncert question wherein it is given a rights are a claim of citizens against the state it is mostly against the state as such sometimes you can claim it against the individual souls all right so the answer is c an ncert question definition it's given in ninth standard also the right to vote and be elected in india is okay it is not a fundamental right all right it is not a natural right so this question was one of the most debated question of that time whether it is a constitutional right or whether it is a legal right you see what is the link between constitution and law so all constitution or else constitution is a law the the link is that constitution is a supreme law all right but all laws are not constitution that is a link you have to know that no first of all if it is mentioned in the constitution then you have to give the answer to be a constitutional right 
Now, as per the right to vote and to be elected as such, like now you see, it is given in Article 326. Now, Article 326 speaks about who has the right to vote in the elections, in the MLA elections as well as the Lok Sabha MP election. So, anyone who is in about 18 years of age, that is any citizen who is about 18 years of age and who is not disqualified under the constitution provisions as well as any other provisions, he shall have the right to vote. All right. Now, additional qualifications are given in RPA. Now, the thing is that if you want to kind of make any changes, it has to be in line with constitution. That means, if you want to say increase the age or decrease the age from 18 to 16 years, it cannot be done without amending the constitution, right? So, constitution provides you the right. So, the rules or the procedures with respect to the right to vote under RPA is subject to the constitution. So, that means, so it becomes a constitutional right. Of course, all constitutional rights are legal right, but here it is given which is more important means it is a constitutional right. This is again an NCRT question taken from 9th standard democratic rights chapter. It is a straightforward NCRT question. It is a constitutional right. Which of the following are envisaged? by the right against exploitation. So, right against exploitation as a chapter it is given in part 3. All right, it starts from article 23 and ends in 24. So, which article? So, here it is. This is 23. This is 17. And uh, this is protection of interest of minorities is 29. And this is 24. So, the answer right against exploitation is 1 and 4. Now, people might think is, sir, even abolition of untouchability is against exploitation, right? No. It may be impliedly, but explicitly it is mentioned right against exploitation as these two. Because untouchability is specific to certain group of people, the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, whereas that prohibition of trafficking human beings as well as like prohibition of child labor, it is common to everyone. So, that is the reason why it is falled under like no uh, right against exploitation. Whereas, uh, abolition of untouchability falls under right to equality 14 to 18 and this comes under cultural and educational rights 29 and 30. Which one of the following reflects the nicest and the most appropriate relationship between law and liberty? So, here it is when they ask about this nicest, appropriate, most appropriate, like you, know, you have to focus on like you no, know, uh, there can be more than one statement to be correct as such, but they are asking the best answer, not the correct answer, the best answer as such, fine. Now, in this case, like you no, know, the relationship as such, like you no, know, again, if you study the political theory textbooks and all, so you will get some more idea. So, this means if there are no laws, there is no liberty. Now, why this one is correct, I will tell you. If there are more laws, there is less liberty means, it does not mean that like no, so India have more than thousands of laws, it does not mean that like no, India does not have a liberty. So, now in the same way like if there is liberty, laws have to be made by the people. The thing is that if you leave to the people, to it depends on the which section of people. Assume that if you leave the law making power in India to the people as such completely, not through parliament or such. Now, what will be the the people will do? People, the, what will be the thought of the majority? So, majority can sometime make a law in their favor, right? It can lead to the tyranny of the majority also. So, it can take away the liberty of minorities, is it not? So, even in those cases, so even if you give it to the people, people will kind of look into their aspect. See, if at all, say I am from a specific language, I would kind of uh, make a law so as to protect my language alone to the cost of other language. Similarly, that is for the same religion also, region also. So, that is the reason why if there is liberty, laws have to be made by the people is also wrong. It can go otherwise also. And if laws are changed too often, liberty is in danger. No, it is not like that. Even our constitution has been changed so many times. That is in order to meet the expectations of the people in accordance with the change in the society, change in time. So, this is also wrong. So, if there are no laws, there is no liberty means yes, of course, like no. See, best example is article 19. If you want to enjoy 
if you want to enjoy the right to freedom of speech and expression of course your right is restricted right how it is restricted you should not defame others what assume that if there is no such kind of defamation so you speak bad about others others will speak bad about you so there will be absurd cries and then like no it won't, it won't kind of like no benefit anyone is it not so that is the reason why like no it's liberty first of all it has to be kind of like no enjoyed only if there is loss on either side so the answer is b again it is also an ncrt question political theory okay 19 in the context of polity which one of the following would you accept as the most appropriate definition of liberty again so here there are two options like no it could be this also absence of restraint also opportunity to develop oneself fully and both are correct but this is the you know you can say it's a kind of a negative dimension this is a kind of a positive dimension so without this this is incomplete okay without this this is incomplete so the answer for the 19 one is d again this is an ncrt question political theory book all right which of the following constitution of which article of the constitution of india safeguards one's right to marry the person of one's choice so it is article 21 straight forward so it is based on a case hardia and previous cases also the hardia's case uh, so it's called as k m ashokan's case also so here they they decided that a person who is an adult has the right to marry a person of his choice as such as a part of a wider interpretation of article 21 straight forward based on the current affairs case hardias case which one of the following categories of fundamental rights incorporates protection against untouchability again very straight forward question so the answer this is article 17 article 17 is under right to equality right to equality is like to 14 to 18 So right against exploitation already we have seen twenty three twenty four. This is right to freedom as nineteen to twenty two. Okay, so the answer is Article seventeen. It's D. Again a very simple straightforward answer. Which one of the following is not a fundamental duty? So it's again a very straightforward factual thing. A right to vote in public elections is not at a duty which has been recommended by so many committees to be included. with respect to dpsp consider the following and they are asking which of the above or gandhian principles okay so out of this gandhian principles definitely two should be there three should be there he spoke about cottage industries as well as village panchayats and uh, when you have two and four like no there is a possibility of like no one also a also and d also but here you see that like no so he he doesn't speak anything about like no this and all all right and uh, so by going by that the answer is b for bombay so he was silent on about like no uniform civil code and all like no so he was kind of focusing on these things only and that is the reason why the answer is 2 and 3 if you study lakshmi kant or if you study any voice like it is very well um you can manage to answer which of the following is or among the fundamental duties again this question is about duties So here, this is Article Forty Six, which comes under DPSP. This is a, a state's a duty. So second won't be there if you eliminate two. So the naturally the answer will be one, three, and four. According to Constitution, which of the following are the fundamental for the governance of the country? So again, it is given in the Directive Principles of Part or Article Thirty Seven. So, in Article Thirty Seven, they are given it is, even though it is non-enforceable, it is still fundamental in the governance of the country. In the Constitution, the promotion of international peace and security is included in the Directive Principles, Article Fifty One. Straightforward, simple question. Regarding the Directive Principles, so what exactly the correct statements? The principles spell out socio-economic democracy. Yes, it speaks about socio-economic democracy through Articles. Uh, Thirty-nine, all right. Until uh, like uh, till fifty-one, like you no, know, so many things. And um, the provisions contained in these principles are not enforceable again. Yes, this is also kind of mentioned expressly in Article Thirty-seven. To uphold and protect sovereignty, integrity, unity. So where it is mentioned. So even preamble mentioned about sovereignty, but. it is about like no the role of states so how the state should be 
sovereign socialist secular democratic republic but this word is exactly mentioned in fundamental a duty now let to uphold the and protect sovereignty it is a duty of every citizen the idea of welfare state is enshrined again in director principles if you look into article 38 they mentioned it very straightforward question so this and all there in 51a the provisions which principle among the following was added by 42nd so you see the nature of questions they are asking it's about amendment also so among this question so this is 43a okay this is 43a and um, all the other provisions are this is about 39 all right so this is about 41 this is 42 so you have all those provisions like no so they are asking about 42nd amendment and 43a is the one so you have to no certain important amendments also like 43a 39a with reference to the constitution of india the director principles constitute limitations upon so in this question people might think that like no so they kind of have a limitation see always keep in mind when you compare with fundamental rights versus director principles the fundamental rights only limits the powers of the government whereas the director principles exerts means it encourages the state to do certain things for the purpose of social welfare for the purpose of economic equality and justice they encourage they don't they, they don't limit as such you see the wordings the state shall endeavor to the state shall strive to all right so in no way it limits as such all right so the director principles doesn't limit the executive as well as legislative functions so the answer is neither one nor two which of the following statement is are true of the fundamental duties so they are asking about fundamental duties a legislative process have been provided to enforce these e duties no the constitution hasn't provided any such kind of things so like dpsp they are also not enforceable if the parliament has made a law or state legislatures have made any law it can be enforceable they are correlated to legal duties no legal duties are separated is given by a specific law based on a statute it has nothing to do with the fundamental duties fundamental duties are given in the constitution so those are given in the specific law so both have no connection as such okay both has no correlation in the context of india which one of the following is the correct relationship between the rights and the duties so rights are correlated with the duties now how you can say that so you have a duty the best example you can say with respect to education so you speak about article 51a k with respect to the parents have a duty to send the children to the schools and 21a says that the state has a duty to provide free and compulsory education to all children from age 6 to 14 years now the state can fulfill that right only if the duty of the parents are properly enforced is it not only if the parents send the kids then the state can give a compulsory education right so it's correlated like you can tell about lot many examples say if you speak about right to dignity you see uh, in fundamental duty number 51 ae it, it speaks about like you should not uh, derogate the dignity of women so by not derogating the dignity of women you are kind of ensuring the dignity as per in article as per in article 21 right the right to life includes right to dignity so that is what so rights are correlated to duties so all other statements are kind of wrong which part of the constitution declares the idea of welfare state again a repeated question so the answer is dpsp as i said article 37 with reference to the provisions in part 4 which of the following statement is or are correct so they are non enforceable part 4 is about dpsp so they are non enforceable all right and the principles laid down is to influence the making of laws yes they are nevertheless fundamental in the governance of the country so the answer is 2 and 3 other than the fundamental rights which of the following parts of the constitution reflects the principles of 
provisions of UDHR, the provisions of preamble also, DPSP also, fundamental duties also. So, there are so many such provisions which is in consonance with the UDHR. Like you now, we have inspired from UDHR for the purpose of preamble also. We speak about like you no know, justice concept in the director principles concept also a lot many things even in the fundamental duties also. All right. An amendment to the constitution of India can be initiated by an introduction of a bill in the Lok Sabha only. No, it can be introduced even in a Rajya Sabha also, either House of Parliament. If such amendment seeks to make changes in the federal character, the amendment also requires the ratification of legislature of all the states. No, only half the state legislatures, second is also wrong. The 44th amendment to the constitution introduced an article placing the election of prime minister beyond judicial review. Now, the statement you need not know the exact amendment which kind of excluded, but you see 44th. So, whatever the mistakes done in 42nd, it was rectified in the 44th amendment. So, this means it is not a kind of rectification, it is a kind of mistake, right? Now, placing the election of prime minister beyond the judicial review is restricted in the powers of judiciary and definitely it would not have been done in 44th, probably 42nd or before that, especially during the times of Indira Gandhi. So, by going with that logic, like you now you can kind of eliminate this one. And the 99th is recently in current affairs, it was related to NJAC and NJAC was struck down based on the grounds of violation of independence of judiciary because it had members from the executive also with respect to appointment of Supreme Court and High Court judges. So, the statement is second alone is correct. So, with reference to the history of ancient India, this is more of a history questions, all right. And uh, so, it was one of the difficult questions also, it is very difficult to kind of answer these sort of questions. So, Mitakshara was a civil law for upper caste and Daibaga was for the lower caste. In fact, like you know, these two are uh, related to what is known as the inheritance laws, okay. So, this Daibaga was followed in uh, Bengal and the nearby provinces as such like you know, Mitakshara was in other provinces as such like you no, know, it was some 12 centuries before the Dayabhaga. So, the first statement you can eliminate because it has nothing to do with the caste. It has nothing to do with the caste. So, you can eliminate these two options now two or three and the second one is correct. Why the second one is correct because like you no, know, this is the statement Mitakshara the sons can claim during the lifetime and they cannot okay so going by that you have to eliminate so you you should know only this one maybe this was based on the current affairs in the judgment like very frequently the judgment and the third one is also wrong so right to privacy is protected under which article so you know that this was protected under article 21 so the case is put us on this case so it was now, a legislation which confers on the executive and administrative authority an unguided, uncontrolled discretionary power violates which article? So, of course, this is not, this is UCC, this is about religion and this is answer is article 14. Now, why? Because you see equality and arbitrariness. they are enemies. So, whenever there is arbitrariness or what is meaning of arbitrariness? You are making a decision without a proper reasoning. So, when you give uncontrolled discretionary power, it can definitely lead to arbitrariness. When there is arbitrariness, it can kind of go against the principle of equality. So, going by this one, it is article 14. And of course, no one can violate article 32. 32 is a kind of a, it's a remedy which is given. So, being a remedy, it cannot be violated. So, so the answer is straightforward, Article 14. Which of the following best defines the state? All right. So, among these things, like you can see, now what are there are four essentials of a state. So, population, territory, government, sovereignty. If you go through the definitions, in all the definitions, you can find the sovereignty is missing. But here only you can find a community of persons permanently occupying. So, you have a population, you have a territory, you have a government and this one 
independent of external control this is what basically called as sovereignty so this is the only one sovereignty is a so the answer is a so you have to apply the logic people so when you ask the questions about the best or most appropriate as i said so there is more than one answer being correct you have to choose the best answer not the correct answer with reference to india there is only one citizenship one domicile yes so what is the meaning of domicile domicile means where you have the intention to reside permanently so you can reside in various places as such but to reside permanently there can be only one place you can be non resident but you are still considered to be indian because you want to settle permanently in india and the moment if you want to settle in other country you you will be getting the citizenship of that country right mm, that is what so there is only one citizenship a citizen by birth only can become the head of the state now who is the head of the state in india the president so the qualification is he should be a citizen of india there is no such kind of mention as such in the other countries like no he should be citizens by birth or anything like as in the usa so this statement is wrong third one a foreigner once granted citizenship cannot be deprived under any circumstances this seems to be an extreme statement so this is also wrong because there are so many ways in which you can be deprived of if you get citizenship by say a registration all right uh, or for or by naturalization as such like you no know, the foreigners so if you obtain by fraud or if you are kind of convicted so there are so, so many conditions given in the citizenship act of 1955 so those conditions if it is applies you can be deprived of it which one of the following factors constitutes the best safeguard of liberty in a liberal democracy so in a democracy so which is the safeguard of liberty so committed judiciary means a judiciary which kind of says s for the government actions whatever the government takes they say s whereas in the case of like you no know, centralization of powers also it is more central means it is nothing it will kind of again like you no know, might take away the liberty and elected government does not ensure as such there are so many situations where as the elected government has becoming autocratic also so going by that no separation of powers why separation of powers because so separation of powers means you are separating you have a, a sharing or a division among the organs of the government so you have like no judiciary legislature and executive so if legislature makes a mistake or executive makes a mistake when there is separation of powers judiciary can keep a check on it that is the reason why these sort of questions are asked all right fine so in a democracy if you want to keep a check like there has to be a proper separation of powers again this is also based on the ncert understanding what is the position of right to property in india so right to property in india so it is basically you see it is also an ncert question from 11th standard they have given in a box so right to property you know that it was moved from a fundamental right to a constitutional right in the 1978 okay from article 191 f to 300a so of course like it is not a fundamental right it is it is a legal right but when it was in 19 clause 1f it was applicable only to citizens when it was moved to 300a it is applicable to any person okay any person shall not be deprived of mm, right to property unless given a fair compensation according to the law fine so answer is b What was the exact constitutional status of India as on 26 January 1950? So here it is one of the kind of a controversial question because um, so the constitution status is that like even though it is not mentioned in preamble, it was a secular. But going by the key of UPSC, okay, see on the when you generally look into the question as such, like you know, people would definitely go for it, a sovereign democratic republic because the words sovereign and uh, Uh, the socialist as such like no these words were added only by the 42nd amendment but some of them had an argument that like okay even even it is not mentioned the preamble so it was still a secular country all right india was a secular country right uh, but but upsc you no know, it 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 went with option b as such fine so so it was sovereign and democratic republic The Parliament can make any law for whole or any part of India for implementing international treaties with the consent or without the consent. So this is 
actually 253 article 253 which says that to give effect to international treaties the parliament can make a law in the state list also of course without the consent of any state in the context of india which of the following principles are implied institutionally in the parliamentary government all right so members of the cabinet or members of parliament yes of course and members hold office till they enjoy the confidence in parliament and the cabinet is headed by the head of the state now you can eliminate third option because who is the head of the state it is president and uh, who is the head of the cabinet it is the prime minister all right so in that case so the third statement is wrong so when you make third statement wrong so the answer is naturally 1 and 2 there is a parliamentary system of government in india because so parliamentary system means always keep in mind so there are exactly a relationship between legislature and executive so in which case it is so rajya sabha cannot be dissolved is correct only parliament can amend the constitution is also correct only on its own lok sabha is directly elected by the people it's correct only but it has nothing to do with the parliamentary system as such like you know, the, the feature of parliamentary system is council of ministers responsible to lok sabha as given in article 75 clause 3 all right the main advantage of the parliamentary form of government is that what is the advantage again the same thing you can see the same question is asked instead of council of ministers the executive instead of lok sabha they are asked about legislature so the same question related to that which of the following is not necessarily a consequence of president's role president's role article 356 so number 1 dissolution of state legislative assembly so what will happen if 356 is there as first of all which is certain to happen is this one but they are asking not necessarily which means which may or may not happen so dissolution of local bodies will never like you no know, it is nowhere linked with like you no know, the failure of constitutional machinery of the state so third one is yes not necessarily a consequence all right and so if you go to the statement as such like you no know, so statement wise if you see like you no know, how you have to read it as such like you no know, so you have to read it and uh, this is not necessarily a consequence all right and dissolution of state legislative assembly dissolution of state legislative assembly also it is not necessarily a consequence this is also optional when it will be dissolved means when nobody is able to form the government okay when the government which kind of failed constitutionally it's not restored okay so when nobody is able to in that case only so this is also not necessary only this is necessary so if you eliminate option 2 itself like you no know, you can see the answer is 1 and 3 so this will never happen all right this is independent of this one and this will happen only as the last resort and that is the reason why the answer is 1 and 3 in these sort of questions be very careful it will be very confusing because they ask not necessarily a consequence you got to be very careful which brings out out of the following statement choose the one which brings out the principle of underlying cabinet form of government so in this case so people might have a confusion between say b and c all right so where it is like no so you have speeding up cabinet as the a very creamy layer among the council of ministers to take the decisions fastly but but of course like no the underlying principle is that like no it's about collective responsibility cabinet as a collective responsibility so this is also one of the questions which had a lot of uh, you know people going for b also all right even the b is also to an extent right as such but this activity is not increasing now since the beginning itself like you no know, there was a cabinet form is it not so it is not that like only in the later when mm, the, so the the economic development happened when the when the responsibilities of government has expanded the cabinet form came no even before that like the cabinet form was there right so this is the correct answer c again it is an ncert question if the president of india exercises his power under article 356 then the assembly of the state is dissolved no this is what like you can see so it is not automatically dissolved only if it is um on no one is able to form the government the powers of the legislature of that state shall be exercisable by under the authority of parliament yes legislature powers are taken to the parliament 
Article 19 is not suspended because like no, it will be suspended only in the case of proclamation of emergency that is national emergency under Article 352. This is about 356 and president can make laws. No, president will take away the executive power of the state, not the legislative power. Which one of the following suggested that governor should be an eminent person from outside the state as such like now? So, this is actually a straightforward question from Sarkaria Commission. A parliamentary system of government is one in which all the political parties in the parliament are represented. The government is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it. The government is elected by the people and can be removed by them. The government is chosen by the parliament but cannot be removed before its completion. So, the answer is the government is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it all right so that is what collective responsibility so with respect to 57 so we adopted a parliamentary democracy based on british model but how it is different from our model so with respect to legislation british there is parliamentary sovereignty yes it's correct india it is limited so this is correct and um, in india matters related to constitutional amendment or constitutionality of the act are referred to constitution bench by supreme court whereas in the case of uk yes uk they don't have something called as a constitution bench because the constitution itself is made by the parliament so in this case this is also correct all right so both are correct as both are kind of differs in india there is no law restricting the candidates from contesting from contesting one looks of election from three constituencies in fact there is a law so rpa amendment act 1951 amendment since 1996 it says that maximum is two all right so it limits as such and the second is a pretty much factual question like not was contested and third one as per the existing rules if a candidate contest from one looks of a constituency and uh, so he should be here. Assume that, like in the case of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he contests from Varanasi also, Vadodara also. He won from both elections. Did BJP bear the expenses? No. All right. Actually, it is one of the proposal made by the Election Commission, which is not yet implemented. So this is also wrong. Okay. So the parties need not bear it. All right. So going by options one and third to be wrong as such, like you no, know, the answer is two only. But this question was omitted as such because the second statement is also not exactly he, he contested in more than that more than three seats so this question was omitted by the upsc as such fine a constitutional government means again a government which is limited by the terms of constitution you see the questions are being repeated as such okay now what are the key takeaways from this paper as such you see that like no, most of the questions are taken from ncrt where you have application of mind in the last few years like no so the questions of the nature either from ncrt uh, from 9th standard 10th standard 11th standard or sometimes the questions you can source it from Lakshmikanth or NAOS as such fine or from the current affairs as in the case of right to privacy but so mostly you try to apply logics here and based on the logic you can kind of uh, um, answer these questions but don't go for unfamiliar questions uh, don't kind of make guesses in those questions okay if, if you're not able to solve by elimination uh, and if you are not sure about like no 50 50 chance don't take much chances so that is one advice like no we'll see in other sessions about the remaining questions also we'll give you more inputs also so please do follow our channel for more such discussions thank you people